you know, first of all, I, you know, let's, let's start. Um, as always, you know, when I begin any workout, you know, any time, any presentation in the community, I like giving thanks. You know, thanks to the divine, the creator for this moment. I like giving thanks to you, you know, as far as participating and being a vibration that's matching mine. You know, that's an exciting thing for me. And one thing I, I, I believe that appreciation does, appreciation, you know, lets you know you possess something. So when you give thanks, and especially when you're giving thanks in moments, you're letting the world, God know, the, the creator, your friends, everyone know that you're in possession of something valuable, valuable enough to give, you know, thanks to. And so I want to thank you for this moment. I always like to thank a brother Andre, um, who, who gives me access to this facility. You know, I, I really appreciate him. And, um, you know, tonight is the beginning of a series of lectures that I want to do. Um, ultimate transformation, to, to kind of to give you an overview of what these presentations are going to be about. First thing is that I, I want to explain to you kind of the, the beginning of what this is about for me. Ultimate transformation, you hear me talk about the mental, the spiritual, and the f physical components. Integrating those three is the only way you can really look at health and wellness and, and see it being fulfilled. Can't be super physical and not have the spiritual and the mental component. You're going to be out of balance. Spiritually, you can have all the spiritual essence about you, but may not have the physical fortitude to carry through with the acts of the spirit. Mentally, you can be spiritually there, you can physically do it, but you may not mentally decide to be positive enough to, to act. So all three of those things have to be integrated together if we're going to talk about health and wellness. So to begin, simply to begin, especially with nutrition, I want, I want to talk to you about who you are. A lot of times you don't really identify with who you really are. And I mean from the greatest standpoint. When I look out into an audience, when I look out into any of my people, any community, I look at this untapped potential. These incredible people who have the ability to choose in a moment to move forward and move forward manifesting whatever they desire. So when you walk or you're in the space that I'm in, I see greatness. So right now, I want you to let go of whatever thought you had previous to coming in here. I don't want you to worry about what you're going to do after you leave here, I want you to let go for a moment and just be who you really are. I'm going to speak to your true greatness. I'm going to speak to the essence of who you are. Are you, are you willing to be that? Are you willing to let go? Yes. All right, if you're willing to let go, we're going to show, I'm going to show you how we can take that vibrational self and move forward, make some choices, and create a lifestyle that basically comes down to one simple term, a wealth conscious. That's what these series of lectures I want to help build in the community, in my people, a wealth conscious. That means understanding that we have everything we need right here in this moment in time to be and do whatever we choose to do. So begin with the physical body. Let's look at this from a scientific standpoint. We're tissues, bone, right, that make up our bodies. Well, those tissues and bones are made up of what? Cells. Those cells are made up of molecules. Those molecules are made up of atoms. And those atoms are made up of something called subparticles. But those subparticles, simply in definition, means energy. So basically what I explained to you is what? We're what? Energy. If you look at it, the root of us, what we are in this form is simply energy. So what I want you to do is take that definition of, of knowing who you are, being energy, and let's attach to what's going to help make that energy be at its best. 
I, everyone came, when they came in, they were given a, a flyer. Um, it's kind of, you know, my basic nutrition tips. And I go in depth when we sit down. But today, what I want to do, I want us to go over um, 10 major points that I think that if we do on a day to day basis, we can truly, truly, truly change our nutrition and health. Now, everybody, we decided to let go, right? For this moment. We decided to let go. So let's deal with ourselves from an honest place if we're going to let go. How many of you here really think about what they eat every day? Really think about it. What, what? So that's, that's good. I want, I want you to raise your hand. I, look, I told you, be honest now. Don't be afraid. Raise your hand if you, if you really think about, really think about what you eat every day. Because what I want us to move forward at the end of the day, I want us to understand that every moment of every day we have the opportunity to what? Choose. And what we do nutritionally has to be a part, has to be a part of our day and our choices. I'm sorry, excuse me one second. You know, and you know what? Let me let me start all over. I gave thanks in the beginning. I forgot to thank the the the, the, the big dog in the house. <laughs> you know, Dumas Dumas wrote. He says a man can only elevate himself as high as the women that surround him. So when you see me doing something out in the community, you got to know I got some people around me that's elevating me. And I have an incredible wife that constantly is elevating. I have three beautiful daughters. In the room, I have two beautiful sisters that their energy, their creativeness, their focus, their belief has made me what I am. I appreciate it. Thank you. Best half. Now, <laughs> now let's get back to the, the, the meat and potatoes. What I want to do is go through this about 15 minutes, and I want to answer your questions, okay? So the first thing I said is that we have a power to choose, right? So in power to choose means that every moment of every day, we get to elevate ourselves. If we've all come to the agreement that we are energy and it's about making, creating positive energy, and nutrition is the area that we're going to speak about today. How do you think we create the most positive energy for ourselves nutritionally? How do you think we do that? Huh? You have the eating foods that have energy in it. Those are living foods that are alive, like we are. Things that are cellular. But the, the first piece that we have to understand is like the first tip. The first tip I tell you, what did I say? I say, I want you to recognize that your nutrition is personal. It's personal. That means that biochemically, when you hear someone say biochemically, that means the physical makeup of who you are from a chemical standpoint. It's different. That's why everyone has a different fingerprint. Not one person has an identical fingerprint to another. Now, I want you to relate that to the fact that since biochemically we're different, that means that everything that I present today has to be evaluated from your personal place. When you go sit in a doctor's office and they start telling you these blanket statements, you gotta, you gotta hold it with a grain of salt because blood pressure, all the things that they measure us with, believe it, there is a huge standard deviation in it. Not saying you to ignore your doctors, not at all. 
What I'm asking you is to know your body. Only you can know your body. So everything that you do from this moment on nutritionally, you need to look at it how it affects you. And since we're energy, we want to make sure that what we do in our choices increase the energy and make that energy positive for us on a personal basis. I, I'm a perfect example. You know, family's from Alabama, Fairfield, Alabama. I've been eating peanuts. They've been, you know, for since I was a little, I give me some peanuts and I'm cool. Just recently, come to find out, like I stopped, I, I got, wasn't feeling well. Doctor told me, don't eat them. I'd go to an herbalist. He said, stop eating peanuts, right? And it was weird that I stopped eating peanuts and that bloaty feeling that you have all the time, I used to have all the time, went away. And me changing that helped me find a new standard of what feels good to me. So as much as I love peanuts, I'd rather feel better. So I had to start pulling those things out. I had to pull them out. We got to make the choices on a personal basis. There's a, there's a story of a an, an middle-aged gentleman who went to a college counselor, junior college counselor, and he's like sitting there looking at class. He want to go back to school. Told the counselor, I'd, want, I'd love to be a doctor. I've always loved medicine. Counselor said, go to school. He's like, what do you, you know, it'll take me seven years. I got to take all these classes and do all this stuff. It'll take me at least seven years to become a doctor. So the counselor sat there and looked at him for a while and said to him, well, in seven years, what will you be if you don't take the classes? You have the power right now to make a choice, regardless of where you're at in your state of being. You can improve your circumstances. You can improve the way you feel. Eliminate time away from it. We, talk, we talked about coming here into the moment, right? We're in the moment. Energy, choices, personal. What's the next, what's the next tip I put down? What's my next tip? Huh? When it comes to health and wellness, what? Incorporate exercise, great nutrition, and positive mindset. We got to be active. That's feeding your body what it needs. You can go out, you can eat vegetables every day, fruits and vegetables. <laughs> I, I made eye contact with someone I didn't mean to make eye contact with. That eat fruits and vegetables every day. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't incorporate the exercise, this person does a great job incorporating the exercise, but also health and wellness is mindset. It's belief. I want us right now in this moment, everybody, you know what, this just hit me in this moment, I got to say this. Everybody look at me. I want everybody to stop wanting. Stop wanting. You know, they tell us all the time, it's like, focus on what you want. I want us to stop wanting. I think wanting puts us in a limbo. God gives us what we think about most. And if we're always wanting something, we're going to always want it. We're never going to possess it. So let's talk in terms of what can bring us a definitive place. Let's say the things that we want are desires. Let's desire it, because that sounds like you got a choice, right? And we do have a choice. So let's desire to have better health. Let's desire that. Let's like to have that. Let's not want it anymore. I think wanting keeps us held off. Well, I want a million dollars. And that million dollars ain't showed up yet, because God gives me what? I think about, right? That's wanting. There's a lack in that. 
So when we want to talk about health, we're going to desire the best health, the best nutrition, the best mindset. Let's desire that. I don't want anybody in here to come up short of what they want on an individual basis. And mindset determines it. I have a, a beautiful client of mine who, who just recently I talked to about making themselves the priority. That's what happens when you make choices based upon your highest self. You're making yourself the priority. You can't help anyone unless you help yourself. And you can't desire for someone else what you don't have yourself. So everyone, especially the beautiful sisters that are sitting in the audience, please make yourself first. In the front row. Third, you cannot out-train out bad nutrition. Let me tell you, I'm a, perfect, I'm a perfect example of that. I'll go out, I can go in the garage and hit 10 sets, 20 sets of 10 burpees, 30 seconds rest, funk up the whole house. <laughs> Can't go in there and go eat crazy. It doesn't work. It won't work. You cannot out-train that bad nutrition. And I mean, I have an elite athlete's mindset, but you can't out-train it. Care how tough you are. So I want you to always know that the first thing we focus on in incorporation with exercise is that we have to get the nutrition together. That has to play a major role because we're energy, correct? We back to the energy. We want to give the body more energy with exercise, but how the body burns energy is through the food we eat. You're going to hear me say calorie. Calorie means energy. So food equals calories. Calorie means energy. So what you eat needs to give you energy. Does everyone get that? Yes. We can't out-train bad nutrition. Number four, drink more water and please don't drink your calories. And I simplify that. Drink more water. Look, water, mandatory part of us. Everybody understand this. Your brain is 80% water. Your muscles, 75% water. The average human being, total body, including skeleton, is between 61 73% water. So if your body's made up of water and you don't give it enough, it's trying to survive. What do you think it's going to do? It's going to hold on to what it needs to live. The only way the body's going to let go of excess water is to do what? You got to give it. And it has to get it on a consistent basis. So I want you to drink more water on a consistent basis. The formula for me is always 16 ounces first thing in the morning. As Soon as you wake up, I know the ladies that train with me at 5 in the morning have to drive to McDonald's sometime and find a restroom. I get it. <laughs> They're racing around. Coach, I got to... <laughs> at, least, at least 16 ounces. I mean, you wake up, you put your feet on the floor, 16 ounces. What that will do, because your stomach's empty, the water's going to hit your colon. Boom. It's going to trigger movement. So you're going to go to the bathroom. Because you've eliminated, what is the body going to do now? It's going to start asking for food. You have now set your metabolism. Now you're going to start metabolizing everything you eat. That means your body's going to ask for food, energy, and you're going to give it, and it's going to be able to perform and do better. Mandatory water. You don't want to drink your calories. See, there's so many hidden calories in sodas. A can of soda is a cup of white sugar. Now everybody said, okay, that ain't a lot. <laughs> That's all right. Cup. Well, look, a cup of sugar, to flush one cup of sugar through your system completely, it's going to take you close to 300 ounces of water. 
That's 200, I mean, two and a half gallons. So think about this. One soda every day. You're going to drink two gallons of water every day to flush that sugar? No. So what happens, the body is not going to be able to process it, so what is it going to do? It's going to start storing it. So the drinks that we drink, you've got to make sure that you're not loading up with drinks with a bunch of calories. All the frappe lattes and the sodas, even the, the, the diet sodas, they say it's sugar-free, but they hide the sugar calories and chemicals. No. Try to drink more fresh juices. Juice yourself. Living enzymes means energy. Yeah, there's calories in it, but it's going to have nutrients and vitamins in it, which can help you. Five, don't fear food. Eat in moderation. It's so funny, as soon as I said that, I don't know why I, I contact with a person I have, we've been battling because there's a fear of food. And I want, want her to know, like everybody else, everything put on this beautiful, loving earth by our divine has God in it. If God didn't want us to eat, he'd have made us where we didn't have to eat. But I put the second half, moderation. The thing what happens to us is that we've, we've, we eat too much. And we eat too much at one sitting. If we learn that food is not bad for us, and start understanding when we're full, and stopping. And I know we grew up, I grew up with a household, you clean your plate. And I still clean my plate. That's a mindset. But everybody, give me a black power sign. I want everybody to look at that and understand that that's the size of your stomach. That's the size, that's the size of your stomach. So when you sit down, how many fists are looking at you? Eating. <laughs> How many punches do you get hit in the chin with? Huh? Five, six fists? Huh? Huh, Charmaine? Huh? At least three fists, huh? Okay, so look, what I, I want us to understand is it's in moderation. So sometimes it's not the food we're eating, it's how much we're eating at one time. So if we just start eating just what our stomach can handle, waiting an hour, two hours, eating again, I believe me, mathematically, calorically, you're going to drop. You're going to lose weight because you're going to drop the amount of calories you're intaking. And that's one of the that's as important a tip as any. Because you know what? I'm like everybody else. I love a hamburger and French fries. I do. And I don't feel especially good the day afterwards. I don't. But I love the hamburger and french fries. So, you know, my daughters and wife, they'll see me sitting at the couch with a big old a gallon of water trying to flush it the following day. So don't let's fear it. Let's not fear it. Let's take charge, all right? Portion size. Seven, living foods. We're energy. Living foods means Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Every meal should contain fruits and vegetables. Every meal. If you eat enough of it, you're going to learn to get full from those fruits and vegetables. There are other things that you, we all eat, but fruits and vegetables have to be the mainstay, and that's because in the beginning I told you what we were. From tissue, right, to cells, molecules, atoms, 
subparticles, subparticles equal energy. Fruits are, and vegetables are made up the identical same thing. So if your body, the, I want everybody to know right now, since we're blocking out this time, and understand that cellularly, our body makeup will regenerate itself completely. Every cell in your body will renew itself within the next six to 12 months, even the bones. Do you understand that? The cells, even in your bones, will regenerate themselves, rebuild themselves. Meaning, if you're eating foods that are high in cellular content, and we'll, we're, we are cellular, when we rebuild ourselves, we rebuild ourselves back to be what? Stronger. Those cells now help us create stronger tissue. Stronger bones. So all of those things are saying as people think we get older and we're supposed to become weaker. I don't believe that. I believe that if we do the right things, we can live a happy, productive, active life. My grandfather in Birmingham, Alabama is 92 years old. And that joke would get out there and cut grass in the heat. Stuff he probably shouldn't do. But the majority, he's, he eats a lot of fruits and vegetables, he's active, mindset. He likes his ice cream and stuff once in a while, but majority of the time, he eats properly. That's what we have the potential to be. That's, that, that's our makeup. So here, we got to minimize the eating of beef and pork, I put that on specifically. Beef and pork specifically. And, and, and I'm gonna speak to the men first with it. We definitely have to pull ourselves away from it. Because what happens with beef with us, as we get older, the body has a much more difficult time to process it. So the steak that you eat tonight will Parts of it will still be in you next month at this time. Now, not to go crazy with it, but when you eat beef and pork, I know you go, you know what you smell like when you come out the bathroom. <laughs> and especially when you're eating it a lot. And you know what that is? It's not the steak you just ate. It's the steak and meat that you ate weeks previous that's being pushed out. So if it's not being eliminated and it's toxic, waste is toxic, y'all hear me? The waste is toxic and it's not going out you, where's it going? Back up into your system. That's why beef and pork is one of the rudimentary components to cancer, cancer growing in you. We want to be able to eliminate, eat, go to the bathroom. You ate six meals, you should go to the bathroom six times. If you're eating beef and pork, that's not happening. You're becoming toxic. Number nine, replace old or bad habits with new habits that are in alignment with what you want. Now this is important because in this journey of all the steps I gave you, everybody's looking at them like, this is a whole bunch of stuff. Well, just take the, one of the habits you want to change. What's one of the habits? One of the habits could be energy drinks. Right? Well, replace with a new one. Instead of drinking an energy drink that's high in sugar, we can take something, a tablespoon of L-carnitine, a natural. L-carnitine is a natural boost. One tablespoon can give you that same boost, don't have the calories, don't have the sugar, and it works to help your heart on a natural state. Yeah, I will. I'm, I'm, at the end, I'm, I'm going to explain that. So we want to replace a, a habit that you don't like or don't want or is not in alignment with what you want with a new habit that's in alignment with what you want that we desire. 
Correct? Ten. Make change gradually, but stay committed. That tip, to me, is what I think why my clients do very well. When they first get with me, I, I kind of micromanage them from the standpoint is that they have, to come, they have to come every day and have to bring a journal where they write their time they ate, what they ate, and portion size. In the very beginning, I just want to see what the habits are. Stan, you've been out there where I had a client, what was it, um, Deborah had the, what, the cookie, or what was it? It was ice cream, cookie and ice cream. And she got mad, I was like, I wasn't mad at what she ate. What I want to do is show you how this affects you. So a gradual change could be, what is it, why are you, why are you eating the ice cream? And she's like, I like something sweet at night. So I'm like, OK, you like something sweet at night? Let's find. She found a yogurt, non-dairy yogurt with fruit. Wasn't that much portion size, but it took away her sweet craving at night. I want to take, I want, to, I want you to gradually find the way that's going to help you stick with it and stay with it. So all the things that I mentioned today, Pick one or two things. It could be just drinking the water. But be committed to it. You see my book. It's called 21 Days to Ultimate Health and Wellness. Everyone asks me, how is it that 21 days helps you develop a habit? In the 1900s, early 1900s, doctors analyzed soldiers that lost limbs, lost a leg and arm. And they said that for the first 21 days, the soldier moved and acted as though they still had the limb. They thought they had it. And it took a minimum of 21 days before the brain started attaching to the fact that it was gone and the body started to adjust. It had created another habit based upon the limb not being there. So that's why 21 days has become like the fundamental base. And I use that as a base because I really like 30 days. But whatever you choose to do, write it down, commit to it, and go through the full 30 days or whatever you choose. And at the end of that 30 days, celebrate the accomplishment. Because you will have achieved something tremendous. And that habit that you develop is going to stay with you. Now you look at something else. Let's change this. Create a new one. You put these things together. Look, everyone understand that ultimate transformation, my business, is based upon a simple concept. Do you, people come out like, you don't take a before and after picture? No. Because life goes on. I don't believe in the P90Xs and all that stuff. I can get anybody. I've trained professional athletes. I get guys ready for the NFL combine, NFL seasons, gold medalists. I can give you tricks that will help your body change, performance-wise, and the way it looks, in a quick fix. But life is continuous. This is a lifestyle change you've got to embrace. There's no before and after. There's living, and then there's not living. So don't put the pressure on yourself thinking that you've got to, you know, it's all right to give yourself a goal. But do it understanding it's a lifestyle change. The last thing is a bonus. Minimize the use of refined sugar, sodium, and eliminate fried foods. Ooh. <laughs> and I put that as a bonus because I, wanted everybody, I want us to, to move and ask, answer questions after this. Look, the biggest detriment to our community, this morning we talked about it. You go in the grocery store, stay out of the middle aisles. Don't shop in the middle aisles. Because in the middle aisles are the products with sugar, sodium, preservatives, chemicals. All in the middle. Anything that, got, that can be on a shelf and not expire, think about it. If McDonald's can take a burger patty, 
leave it in the freezer, and it can be in there for years. Years, doesn't change. You eat that hamburger patty, if you're not doing the right things, it can go into your body system and do what? Be there for what? Years. It hasn't changed composition because it's in your system. And all of those preservatives, all the sugar, all the sodium that they use to preserve the food stays in our belly, and because it becomes toxic, we become cancerous. We become diabetic, hypertension, all of those things affect us drastically and immediately because of those foods. Fried foods, cholesterol. See, they, they tell you about good and bad cholesterol. Y'all hear that all the time, right? I want to tell you what cholesterol basically is. When you eat a piece of fried chicken and you've salted it and seasoned that chicken, those seasons crystallize when you fry it. So when you eat it, and especially if you're using regular table salt, it's sand in it. So when that sand starts hitting your digestional tract, it's scraping and it's what? Making you bleed. Well, the body says, you have a sore, send something to heal it. That's cholesterol going to it to go heal it. So if you're constantly eating those foods, scarring that digestional tract, Cholesterol is being sent, it starts to do what? Clog your pipes. And when it clogs your pipes, that's where we develop hypertension, diabetes, all the, all the stuff that they love to say that black folks have. And we have an opportunity to eliminate those things from us. With some simple, those, you follow those simple tips? I can go in depth. I can go in depth with anyone at any time. We can sit down and I can take you through what you, from the sources of energy, from food, I, all of that. But you follow those tips, your nutrition will change and change for the better. In that moment, we decided to, to block out mentally, right? Did you, did you understand and feel what I expressed to you today? Yes. Is it anything that I asked you to do today you feel you can't do? That's, hey, that's all right. You know what? That's what I want. That's what I'd rather hear. I'd rather hear somebody telling me that. It's going to take me a while. They know this, this, this is your life. How bad do you want to feel good? You know, I, I, love, I love telling this story. My favorite. My favorite. A gentleman, he has... A pool party, multimillionaire, invites all his employees over. In the pool, he's, he's telling everybody in the backyard, he's like, in the pool, I got some dangerous fish. I got some sh a shark, some sharks, stingray, piranhas, some really dangerous fish. If any of you jump in one end and swim to the other end, I will give you anything you want. Millions. I'll make you president of my company. Cars, helicopters. He started explaining all the stuff he'd give him, and he heard a splash. Boosh! <laughs> this dude swims across, gets out the other end of the pool. He's like, oh my God, you did it. He's like, what do you want? You want to you be the president of my company? You want millions? You know what, you want the car helicopter? He said, I don't want none of that. I just want to know the name of the man that pushed me in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your push? What's going to push you in the pool? Is it some doctor saying you're diabetic? Is, it some, is that going to be your push? Is some doctor telling you, you know what, we want to take your toes off? You're going to take all of these medications? Or is it going to be Coach E standing in front of you telling you, you know what? Your potential to be and do whatever you want, you possess it right now. 
and the divine wants to give it to you. That wealth consciousness is yours right now. You don't have to do but choose it and stay focused on that good. Believe in the good in yourself. We were birthed and born out of sheer loving power of God. Incredible power, the creator of all things. That power is in us. And it never leaves us. It's with us in every moment. And it gives you a promise by saying to you, you ask, it's given. You seek it, I'll help you find it. You knock and the door will be answered. That's on you. That's on us. He's saying you do these things, it's yours. Your health plays into your wealth. That's everything. The success you have on your job, your relationships, all of those things help you be your best self. And when you're at your best self, that vibration, that energy we talked about in the very beginning, there's a formula for that energy. And when that energy is positive and it's constantly positive, it hooks up and links to what? Other positives out of no way can become a way. And that lives inside of you. I'm here to hopefully be a mirror to what you are, to what we can be. I tell my athletes, and I'm gonna end it, I'll answer any questions. I tell the athletes I train, we have a, we have a basic theme. It says, I can and I will. I have guys playing NFL, NBA, gold medalists. And one thing I know that I embed in their heads is that they can and they will. They eliminate doubt. Pull doubt from your existence. Why would we think that we're going to fail? Why do we think that first? Why don't we think that we're going to succeed first? And believe deeply in that. And let that generate for us the life that we live. I want to answer any questions you have. Anybody got any questions? Yes, ma'am. Well, ap apple cider vinegar, you can take the apple cider vinegar to regulate your blood. First thing in the morning, a tablespoon. If it doesn't upset your stomach, follow that tablespoon with at least 16 ounces of water. And then you can take it midday. I don't like for people to take it at night unless they're like a high metabolic person. Like I have, you know, Dominique DePrimo who does a radio show. She can, she can take it at night. Her metabolism is really high. So to process it and it'll flush in the morning. If it doesn't, it can basically give you gas. It won't get digested. You lose gravity of it. Doesn't it get absorbed? And you start creating some issues for your belly. I want it to get flushed through. And one thing that's good about the apple cider vinegar, especially when you're in the beginning stages of fitness, it can act as a thermogenic. And what I mean by thermogenic is that it'll heat your body up from the inside out. So you take that apple cider vinegar, drink your 16 ounces of water and go work out, you're gonna sweat more. So you're gonna burn more fat cells. Remember this, remember this. One thing about, about losing weight and maintaining weight, I want everybody to understand, and that's why water is important, is that when you burn the fat cells, when you burn fat, it has to exit your body. How does it exit your body? Through perspiration and elimination. So if you're not going to the bathroom and, you're sw and sweating, they're just floating in your bloodstream. So if they float in your bloodstream and you eat a bad meal, those fat cells reattach. You want them to go. That's why when people that work out with me, we do a lot of, like I'll, we'll do a cardio period, but mainly we're gonna do stuff that's gonna create muscle. Because what muscle creation will do, is gonna burn those fat cells. And if you're drinking your water, you're gonna perspire it out and eliminate it out. 
Those bad boys are gone. People go get liposuction all the time. And you see them get a thin waist, and all of a sudden they get fat ankles. And I know it sounds funny, but because what happened was that they just eliminated the fat cells in that area. They didn't change their habits. So the fat cells where this, they were biggest was in their waist. Well, the cells in the other part of your body just wasn't getting the nutrients because those fat cells were, was eaten first. So once they're gone, they get to eat. So the ones around your ankles and hips, and also before you know it, you can walk around and got <laughs> something else happening. That's why, that's why it's key to do, have the nutrition along with it. Don't just do the quick fix. There was another question? Yes, ma'am. Any kind of vegetables, but I like for, you know, and, I, and I'm going to designate us in our community to eat more leafy greens because it's more alkaline in the leafy green. And what the alkaline will do, it'll help dissipate uric acid. You know, that that's, creates arthritis, creates gout. It also absorbs the moisture that's in between the muscle and the skin. So to help you lose the weight, and it's so high in nutrients that's going to help you build an immune system. So when you're eating the leafy greens, you're working out like people think you've got to drink a protein shake like a bodybuilder to recover. You can eat some kale, greens, some broccoli, some cauliflower, and it has just as much protein in that. Because bodybuilders that do it on a healthy style, you've seen them walking around with bags of broccoli for the protein. No, no, don't be apologetic. I'm sorry? Right, we have it tonight. My wife, we have it in the back. Yep. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I take steroids. Mm-hmm. And I have this idea that I can, uh, even though I take the steroids, I can work the steroids out if I work out and get a good nutrition. You know what? I, I'm, I will never, even though I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night, I'm not a doctor, but I, I believe in this concept. The body is perfect. It knows how to self-heal. So what a lot of times, if the first thing we do, if you do this, if anyone ever gets diagnosed with anything major, whether it be cancer or whatever, and I'm, and I'm serious, first thing you do is eliminate all sugar out of your system, processed sugar. So when you have something that you take in that has zero nutritional value, it robs from the body system. It's trying to live. That's why the pancreas works so hard to produce insulin. So after it's done working as hard to try to put the body in balance, it becomes fatigued and basically does what? Stops and it stores it as fat. So what happens when you're taking a steroid, when you're taking any medication, 99% of the time, it is to mask and not heal. And because it's not healing, it'll keep you, but it, you want the body to do what? You want it to heal. So the, what, what I suggest you do, and, and I believe that Chinese medicine, where they're dealing with natural herbs, to go see them first. Take whatever you're doing, take all the medications you have, and have them evaluate you from that standpoint. Because what they can do is help you transition off of them. And you know, your commitment to it, and your mindset in regards to it, is important. Remember I said um, we're energy? That energy is vibrational. So. Vibrational, everything is vibrational. This table, even though it's solid, it's vibration. So from sound is a level of vibration to solid, to our bodies, to our thoughts. Thoughts are vibrational. So if we vibrationally lock our mind on what we desire and clearly see it, 
and clearly send that signal to the body that I'm healthy. Tamiko, you're a perfect example. I have a client, I hate to single her out, but when she started with me, she was dealing with a whole bunch of things that were medically diagnosed that she wasn't, they said that she wasn't going to recover from. And all I did was speak to her in terms of what she wanted. I'm like, you're healthy. You're strong. You can do this. Your body's healing. Your body's in perfect health. Then in the beginning, it doesn't feel, but then all of a sudden you start believing. And because you start believing vibrationally, that energy starts sending that signal to those cells. Those cells start attaching, going, we are healthy. And when the cells, they say we are healthy, everything that goes through the body becomes healthy. We have that power that we can use it every day, every moment. I have a client who is getting ready to run a marathon in Hawaii. When she first came to me, she was like, I'm just trying to get in shape. My knees, the doctors told me I'll never run. I really like running. I can never run again. You know, feet were, and knees, everything just... I said, okay, but if you want to run again, you can. And it was about six to seven months of walking that we did. And then I told her, every hill, I want you to jog up the hill. She's like, you sure? She jogged the hill. About a month later, I said, you know what? After you get up to the top of the hill, keep jogging until that end. Got it. And one day, it's probably a year and a half later, I said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to jog completely around the park, one mile. She's running her sixth half marathon. She's run four complete marathons and didn't have any pain in her knees. That's her doing. That's what's in all of us. All I do is assist that. Any other questions? Hey, keep going. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I want to say, you know, I've had some people in my life who have not been to the doctor for years. They're not healthy. Doctors have told me they're not healthy. They don't want to go to the doctor. <laughs> Well, you know, the first thing, I, the first thing I, I thought of when you said that is that, you know, the priority and the commitment that you have for yourself is what's mandatory. See, a lot of times people pull on you, but we enable them by giving them those little tidbits and information. And what you might have to do is go, you know what, you're going to have to seek it yourself. Because the bottom line is this, whether you send them to a doctor or send them to someone else, they're going to have to do the work. And if they're not bought into the choice and doing it, it ain't going to happen. You're straining and stressed over trying to help them. They got to want to help themselves. So the, what, what, it's like what I talked to the ladies about in the very beginning. You're the, the power of the universe. The closest thing to God on earth, the female principle, proven through history. Now, they've written books and tried to pull, flip y'all out of it and make the male the power. But why would they make the person in power that can't birth the child? So you have a power, but that power that you possess happens when you're in tune with yourself. You're responsible for you. You be happy, you be healthy, and walk your walk. And maybe through you walking your walk, it might inspire them to make the choices themselves. So that's what I suggest. Because you can keep, what's the, what's the saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't, can't make him drink. And here you're stressing over somebody else. Now you sick. All right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, all right. Natural boost. Now, now we, we had a conversation this morning because I saw this big old uh, can of gasoline that she was drinking. <laughs> like, what the? <laughs> and you know what? And everybody get, everybody get caught up. Like, you got zero calories, zero, zeros. 
And I tell them, read that little patch that's at the bottom. The facts. Those facts at the bottom of the label tell you the truth about what's in it. Because you got to remember the zeros that they put down next to it, they get an FDA approval of what the percentage that can be in the drink that they will allow to say it's zero. So those, still, those things are still in it. But they've been approved at, you know, four milligrams is acceptable as zero. And then you look at the facts and it goes 200, I mean, 2,000 fat calories. It was like 2,000 calories in the drink. Well, here's the natural boost, the L-carnitine. Anybody know what carnitine is? Carnitine, you know what it is? What is it? No, what is it? Huh? It's, it's the purest of the amino acids of the protein. The, um, C-A-R, carnitine, C-A-R-N-I-T-I-N-E. I'm like, hey, I need a blackboard sometime. <laughs> you know? I just do the spelling test, like, close your eyes, see the <laughs> C-A-T. I had to see it. <laughs> Look, I, most of my clients, I usually have them start shutting down with the fruit at 3 p.m. Because the fruit is still a carbohydrate. And the carbohydrate will still turn to sugar. But... I would prefer you eat fruit than to eat some other junk. Because even though it's sugar, it has the nutrients in it that can help the body system. And because most fruits are, main, are full of water, most of it's going to dissipate. So, so, here's, so, pure form, so, so L-carnitine, I, I want you to start using, okay, as a boost. There's something called conjugated lanolac acid, CLA. CLA, conjugated linolac acid. And what that is, is another boost, but what it'll do, it'll take stored fat and use it as energy. <laughs> the two best. Those are the two best. The other piece that I think we're going to work on doing is that as we become more fit with our nutrition and exercise, you're going to get more energy. Because what I, I and I'm, we're doing a little counseling here, but it's a good example to everyone. When I looked at her meal book, she has some high carb foods in there. Now, now complex carbs, simple carbs, all right? So simple carbs, when you eat a simple carb like a candy bar, it'll give you an immediate boost. But you crash. You crash because the insulin from the, the pancreas trying to produce the insulin to put the body in balance, it'll give you that immediate hype. But once you crash, you're down. It's hard to come out of it. So what you want to do is deal more with complex things that's going to sustain you for over a while. So I know it sounds crazy, but to eat like a bowl of oatmeal. I know, before you get on the road, I sound like, yeah, you know, will help you. Green tea. Why, why'd you make it frown? You don't like green tea? No, no, no. it's all right. We're gonna try more natural things. But once I sh shape your carbohydrates where, where you're not crashing in your day, I think you're going to have more energy. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? A, a quick cure for what? Cankles. What is cankles? Huh? <laughs> hey, anything, anything that you can burn Fat with exercise gonna make it happen. You know, I, I how, how many clients I got in here? I mean, I got a few. Everybody in here will know. You know, I have a, a great friend in here, Karen, and we. Let me tell you something. 
I wish Karen, I, you know, I should have told you to bring your picture when you first started. When, when Karen first started, she looked great. But once you start exercising and really getting fit, you look at where she started and you're like, okay, where, did that, where was that person? Exercise is a serious, it's a monster. It can reshape you. And especially if you were active when you were young, that muscle memory, I can activate it, but you gotta work. Well, well, if, if it's water and swelling, we start off talking about water today. A lot of the water we hold is because we don't take in enough. Do you drink coffee? Let's see. Do you drink coffee? What, how, how many fruits and vegetables do you eat in a day? You eat a lot of greens? You eat any kale? Okay, look, we can start there. We can start just with the nutrition. I bet you... How much, how many packaged foods do you eat? Do you shop in the middle of the store? You eat a lot of, you eat frozen vegetables, any canned foods? So you're eating all natural. Okay, all right, well, that's, uh, binges, how long does your binge last, dude? How long, how long your binge last, cuz? <laughs> oh my God. Because we can have some binges that can last some years. Okay? Well, this is what I suggest. This is what I suggest. I want, you're gonna, I want you to call me, but I want you to start writing down everything you eat, the time you eat, what you eat, and portion size. And I want, I want you to do it for 14 straight days for me. Okay? After the 14 days, we're going to sit down and talk. And I'm going to take your circadian rhythm, your habits, and show you what you do in your 12 hours that you're up that maybe hurts you or help you. Yes, ma'am. Um, the the, the, the fresh one? Yeah, the read the back of the package. It's what they did to preserve the food, to keep it frozen. Those chemicals affect the, affect the vegetable. And because, and, and because we want them we want living enzymes in the food, when you freeze it, a lot of them go kaput because they've processed it, they've cooked it a little bit, then they freeze it. Then they add stuff to it so it stays. The color, it's so many things. Read the back of the package. With, with nitrogen, yeah. I forget what the actual chemical name was. She was up and then I go. That's the best way, steam them. You don't want to cook the life out of them. The best way to gauge it, you know they have a temperature and I'm gonna have Yvette, cause my wife said we're gonna finish up and, cause she made a salad that I believe that if you do this at least three to four times a week with your protein at, at night, it can change your, it'll change your life. Has a lot of alkaline in it. But to answer your question was, I mean, the, the, you want the, the vegetable crunchy. If it's soft, a lot of times you've cooked it, it's dead. It's dead. And even though you're eating it, you know, it'll give you a movement, it'll give a little bit of fiber, but at least enzymes that really help you, done. The chef might want to say something on how to cook them. That's good. That's a good combo. Um, if the liquid I would add to it would be almond. Almond, look, I want everybody to move away. No soy. No soy. And the reason why I pull people from soy is just right now, it's just too many chemicals. Monsanto and the folks doing, they're doing too much with soy. 
You know, the hormonal changes that I think our kids are getting, it's because of the soy. So I would suggest you use almond milk, um, rice. Rice is really sweet to me. I think almond is the best. Linda, do you suggest any other? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. When you cook greens, when you kill them all the way, salt, tender, 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 that's not good, huh? Or should we use one with crunchy? I, I, I believe crunchy. And I love them, I love them killed too, because I'm from Alabama. <laughs> I love them dead too. What a piece of, piece of fat up in there. What's that? That was a new one for me. Ba black strap. I, I've never, you know what? I, I've never heard that before. That's a new one. I'm, I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna check it out. So black strap molasses. All right. I'll, I'll try that. Yes, that's a detoxer. Turkey neck or, or yeah. wing or something, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's, that's good. I, I like that, you know, you can put some fresh garlic, onion, whatever in there to give oh, it a season. So, yeah. Can you replace sea salt instead of the salt? I mean, salt instead of the sea salt, you know. Yeah. Sea salt, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know what, the Himalayan salt, that the Himalayan is pink, crystal is probably the better if you're going to use the salt. 